Hey, my name is Dylan from Live Life Creative. Thank you for spending some time with me watching this video. I hope this video will earn a like and a subscribe from you. So let's get into it. Now today I'm reviewing the Yangnuo 35 millimeter F2 lens. And this is for Nikon F mount full frame. There's also this design for Canon EF mount. So this is what it looks like. Now there is a newer version for the Canon RF mount and Sony E mount mirrorless. That is a different design than this. Now I got this lens because I wanted to try out a 35 millimeter focal length, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. Now I bought this lens for $106 from B&H Photo. I've seen it as low as $90 on Adorama's website for the Canon EF mount. Um, so the price does fluctuate a little bit. So, you know, about $100. So this is a very cheap lens. So the question is, how good can this possibly be? Bottom line, up front, I'm gonna say this is a very good lens for the price that it is, but there's definitely some quirks that you need to know about. One of the things to know is, this isn't gonna be as good as a name brand 35 millimeter lens, but kind of the recurring theme of this whole review is, is that this lens is performing at higher than $100, even if it's not reaching all the way to the name brand quality. Now, if you're considering this lens, the thing to keep in mind is the 35 millimeter F 1.8 from Nikon is over $500 new and around in the low 300s used. If you can get uh, the Nikon 35 millimeter F 1.8 for about 330 or so, I would, I would pick that up. I'm gonna say that at $100, this Yangnuo lens will give you 80 to 90% of the performance and quality that you're gonna get from the Nikon version of this lens. So if you just wanna dabble in the 35 millimeter focal length, or you just don't have a lot of money to throw around, then this is gonna be a great option for you. I'm gonna be making a lot of comparisons to Nikon's 50 millimeter lens, 50 millimeter F 1.8 lens, because there's actually a lot of physical similarities between these two lenses. There's also a much closer price point similarity. Uh, the Nikon 50 millimeter F 1.8 is actually around 217, $217 new. And you can get this for maybe 150, 175 used. And for background information, I shoot with a Nikon D750. So that's what I use with the 35 millimeter Yangnuo. And I've always been using with this 50 millimeter from Nikon. So let's get into the specs, set that aside for now. So the Yangnuo here is a 35 millimeter focal length and F2 aperture, maximum aperture. It has a 58 millimeter lens thread inside of there, which is actually the same as the Nikon lens thread. When I hold these side by side, you can see that these are almost the exact same dimensions. Like it seems like Yangnuo actually took a mold of the 50 millimeter F8, F1.8 from Nikon, and then just created uh, their own shell. I mean, there's some very, very slight differences. If you could look at them really super up close, you can see them, but these are just super similar, like physical dimensions. So one important thing to note, Yangnuo does not include a lens hood uh, with this. And so I'll tell you more about how I solved that later. It involved a shocking surprise at prices of injection molded plastic. They also did not include a lens pouch, which doesn't matter to me because I don't really use the lens pouches at all. It is not weather sealed. So don't take this out in the rain. Don't take this to the desert. I would definitely not recommend taking this to the beach, but then again, it's only a hundred dollar lens. Like, I mean, that is kind of the advantage of a hundred dollar lens. Not that a hundred dollars is nothing, but it's not $500, you know. As far as lenses go, inside, glass inside, it's got seven elements in five different groups. Make of that what you will. I'm not an optical engineer, so it's kind of meaningless to me. The description on B&H does say that it's multi-coated. I don't know what that means either. You could multi-coat it with cat spit, and I don't think that would make, <laughs> make a good difference. So it depends on what those coatings are. Now you should know that the aperture has seven blades, which is actually the same as the Nikon 50 millimeter. I think the aperture blades in here is just as rounded as they are in the Nikon. Now this Yangnuo lens has a close focusing distance of just slightly under 10 inches. So you're not gonna get true macro shots out of this, but it is gonna get like really, really close. One thing that you do need to keep in mind, since this is a 35 millimeter focal length, if you're getting like 
this close to your subject with this focal length, you're gonna see some distortions. Just like in this video here, anything that's really close to the lens is gonna look really huge, and anything really far from the lens is gonna look really, really small. So it's gonna have a similar amount of distortion. Now, I'm shooting this video at 24 millimeters, so it's not gonna be quite as extreme as this, but there is gonna be some amount of distortion in there. It does have a autofocus, manual focus switch on the side here. I was actually kind of surprised by the way this works. Uh, on most lenses, autofocus lenses, made in the last 20 years or 30 years, when you have this autofocus, manual focus switch, and it's on the autofocus side, you can still turn the manual focus ring, it'll let you manual focus until you go to autofocus again. Now that's not the same with the Yangnuo lens. Like when it's in autofocus mode here, like it's only in autofocus. You can turn this for days and it's not gonna do any manual focusing. It's only when you switch it over to manual focus does it engage in manual focus at all. So switching between them is actually gonna be more important for manual focusing because it won't work in autofocus mode whatsoever. So like I mentioned a minute ago, there's no lens hood that comes with the Yangnuo lens. In a lens hood is something that I really like to have. I use a, like across the shoulder sling straps. And so my lenses are like always banging into my side. So in order to protect the front element uh, when I'm just walking around, I like to have a lens hood. Now what I noticed, this is the lens hood for the 50. And I've been talking about how similar these two lenses are. So I thought I would just take the lens hood from the 50 and see if it fits on the uh, 35 from Yangnuo. And once you know it, it sure does. Like it fits perfectly. Uh, now this is the Nikon HB47. So that's when I decided to go into B&H and I just wanted to see uh, how much is an HB47 from B&H. And I was shocked, like honestly, this little piece of injection molded plastic is $35. Like just for basically having the name Nikon printed on it in super tiny letters, I'm like, I'm not gonna buy a $35 lens hood for a $106 lens. So uh, even on B&H, they sell the Velo brand, which is kind of a knockoff brand. Even that was 20 bucks. I'm like, I'm not gonna spend 20 bucks on a lens hood, you know, a piece of plastic like this. Uh, so then I switched over to Amazon um, and there's a few different options. Uh, but what I got is the Photosy, I think is how it's, is what it's called. On this entire box, it just says lens hood everywhere except on this sticker. So right here on the sticker is the only place where it has the brand name Photosy on it. So this is definitely like marketed under several different brands, knockoff brands. So, you know, this was $5.97, like dollars US. And you know, I'm pretty happy about that because that's all I needed. I mean, it's just a simple piece of plastic, honestly. Like it doesn't need to be $35. So here is my 30 second review of the Photosy HB47 replacement. Uh, now you can feel that's a little bit thinner, cheaper plastic than the Nikon one. And it does bend a little bit more than the Nikon one, but really not that much of a difference. And for the job that it needs to do, it's perfectly sufficient, so. Now I did notice that the Nikon lens hood and the Photosy lens hood, they would set more securely on the 50 millimeter and both of them, of the lens hoods, would set on the Yangnuo lens less securely. So that tells me it's more of a difference with the connection that's on the Yangnuo lens mount more than it has anything to do with the difference between the Photosy and the Nikon lens hoods. I will say that I have no worries about either one of the lens hoods falling off of either one of the lenses. I think it's gonna be fine. So talking about image quality, uh, when you're wide open at F2 on the Yangnuo lens, it's not gonna blow you away when you're focused on something and you zoom in, you know, 100% focus, 100% uh, zoom. It's not gonna be super amazing, but when you're viewing the image full size without zooming in at all, it's still gonna look pretty much fine. If you're like super picky about getting like the most maximum amount of sharpness of your lens, even at wide open apertures, this isn't gonna be the lens for you, uh, but you're gonna have to invest a lot more money into getting a really nice lens like that. So you're probably not on the market for this price level of lens anyway. So this really goes back to the recurring theme that I mentioned at the top of the video. 
this lens isn't gonna like blow your mind, but it is gonna perform better than what you probably expect out of a $100 lens. And as you'd expect, as you increase the aperture number, which actually makes the aperture smaller and increases the depth of field, how much stuff is in focus, uh, whatever you're specifically focused on with this lens is gonna look sharper and sharper. So at f4, uh, this lens is looking pretty good, and I'd say by f5.6, f8, this is gonna be a really nicely sharp lens, actually. I did notice uh, some pretty significant flaring. Uh, I was doing a family session and shooting directly into the sun for quite a bit of it because I wanted their faces to be in shadow and not super harsh sunlight. Uh, and it was actually kind of weird. A few of the shots, there is some flare like down in the right and left bottom corners instead of like coming across at an angle of uh, from the direction of the sun, which I thought was, was kind of a weird way to get flare. Um, it's kind of interesting, I guess, uh, but it did, um, all the flare did decrease the contrast overall in the photo. And I didn't quite get it all back when I was trying to use like dehaze and more contrast and things like that. Um, I got the photos back well enough that I still liked them and still delivered them but this is not a lens that deals with flare from the sun very well. But again, maybe a little bit better than you expect a hundred dollar lens to do in the first place. But when I was shooting more normally, as in not pointing this directly into the heart of the sun and stabbing my eyes out through the viewfinder, I did see that the colors and the contrast are... Oh gosh. Well, that was terrifying. I thought I was gonna start an electrical fire. Now I'm not going to pretend and say that I'm such a sophisticated photographer that I can see these really minute differences between uh, two lenses and the color rendition and the sharpness and things like, well, maybe the sharpness more, but the difference between contrast and color rendition. But overall, I did see that uh, it seemed to find that these two lenses were pretty, pretty similar. And I still really like the contrast and colors out of the 35, uh, just under more normal shooting conditions. It's really the autofocus, I would say, uh, where the 35 millimeter starts to show its price points. It can focus pretty slow, uh, even slower than the 50, which is what you would expect really. But don't expect lightning fast autofocus out of this lens. In low light situations, it's really struggle to lock focus on the subject. I was using that just like under normal, like house lights with my son, just taking pictures of my baby. And even with the, the autofocus assist lamp, it still struggled, you know, hunting back and forth, back and forth, and it still couldn't get a really great lock reliably, and definitely not quickly, under kind of normal amount of light, at least within a house, you know? Like, you don't think of a house being super dark. So if you're like a wedding photographer, uh, taking pictures on the dance floor, using this lens is not gonna be a great experience. Uh, but I would also say if you're a wedding photographer, save your money and buy a more high quality 35 millimeter lens than this because you want to use quality equipment for your clients and you know get them really good photos which is going to be more difficult with this lens now my lens this copy of it i tended to front focus just a bit which means uh it would just like be off consistently by focusing a little bit too far so i went into my camera and just made an autofocus a micro adjustment to just bring it back a little ways and that seemed to do fairly well now where this lens did struggle, I was taking pictures with it just today actually, and I was going for a walk uh, with my wife and my baby and I would let them get ahead of me, maybe 15, 20 feet, and focus on my wife, you know, on the back of her head. And then I went and checked the photos on the back of the camera and she was a little bit blurry, but like the ground and the grass ahead of her, in the background ahead of her, that would be sharp. And I did this with like mailboxes and a few signs and things like that, where it was 20-ish feet ahead of me and with a lot of stuff in the background. And it seemed to like still be front focusing even with the micro adjustment. So that was pretty frustrating. I would say that's another place where uh, this lens shows that it's a $100 lens, not a $500 lens. As far as autofocus tracking goes, continuous focus, I would not trust this. This isn't gonna track super great. Uh, it's gonna be tracking like pretty slow, like getting initial lock from your autofocus is pretty slow. It's also gonna track kind of slow, so kind of have an upper limit of how fast your subjects can be moving 
and keep this working well for you. I'm not gonna talk a lot about using this lens for video, um, just because it's probably not gonna be the greatest video lens in the first place. It's not stabilized at all for one thing. And I can recommend not using Nikon's autofocus in video, in live view. I just find it to be not a great experience. Uh, when it has to change autofocus, uh, like move the focus around, it tends to hunt back and forth and that's really just annoying to watch. Now, if you're choosing to use this lens for video and you're gonna autofocus during recording anyway, you should know that it does make uh, a good, maybe not a crazy amount of noise, but it's definitely audible in the on-camera mic that I, when I was testing it out, I don't know if you do like a shotgun mic in the hot shoe, if that's gonna pick up the noise, uh, but I think that's a definite possibility for sure. Now, who is this lens for? I would say overall, this lens is for a beginner who has, you know, they've gotten their first camera and they wanna move past the kit lens. Um, if you're using a crop sensor camera and you get this lens on a Nikon crop sensor camera, this lens is gonna give you about the same you know, composition and framing as a 50 millimeter would on full frame. Another person that this lens would be great for would be someone who doesn't have a lot of money to throw around. You just wanna test out the 35 millimeter focal length. You wanna see what it's like, see what it looks like. I wouldn't recommend this lens to you if you need it in like low light conditions, which is kind of a bummer because it is an F2 lens. So it, you'd think it'd be pretty good in low light, at least for being able to get a lot of light through the lens to the camera. Uh, but just with the autofocusing issue, this it's not reliable, it's not quick. Um, sometimes in low light, it wouldn't even focus at all. Like it would just give up after a couple of tries. So if you're a wedding photographer, not reliable enough for you. If you're a professional photographer in some other genre, not gonna be reliable enough for you, especially the weather ceiling too. If you're doing anything outside and it could rain, this could you know, really get itself screwed up for not being weather sealed, but also screw up your camera body too. So I hope this has been a useful video for you, a useful review of the Yangnuo 35 millimeter F2 lens. So I hope I've earned a like and a subscribe, hit those buttons below, and that'll help you see my future videos. Uh, my name is Dylan, and thanks for spending some time with me on Live Life Creative. What just turned off? Oh, I watched that. Oh, ah, uh, okay. Hey.